Hey, very warm welcome along. Uh, listen, we do appreciate you still being with us here on CBS All Access. Uh, it's been a tough day today. It's today that the world has lost a, a legend of the game of football, Diego Maradona, passing away as a result of a cardiac arrest uh, at the age of 60. Of course, leaves behind his family and a whole world full of adoring football fans. We're going to take you out to uh, Guillaume Balague, who's been standing by for us in, in Milan, just to give us a final word on this one. Guillaume, you have shared uh, really personal thoughts and insights uh, for us throughout the evening. It's been fascinating to listen to you. You were writing a biography, extremely well informed on, on his life and, and the story of Diego Maradona. What, what are your final thoughts this evening before you leave us? I want to take you to the World Cup 86 quarterfinals, the game against England, because that was the game where he went from being the best player in the world to being a legend. And if you actually pick it from the moment where Steve Hodge, the defender of England, decides to kick the ball backwards and high back to Peter Shilton, the goalkeeper, at that moment Maradona gets into the box and thinks, I can get there, or maybe I cannot get there. Peter Shilton thinks, I'm definitely going to get there. Anyway, that's the moment where Maradona lifts his hand and very cleverly scores the goal with his hand. By the way, Baldano will tell you, will tell you later that uh, he had done that in training and people didn't realise that he was doing it so well, he was so clever at it. He runs away to celebrate. The first person that he hugs is the kid man from Argentina, but also from Napoli, a friend of his, who was actually the man that used to pass the doping for him. Hug him, and then a couple of uh, Argentinian players come to him as well to hug him, and they're not convinced what's happened there. And Maradona says, "Do hug me," and run away as if he had been a proper goal. Otherwise, they'll change their mind. Well, uh, Ben, the, goal, the referee, look at the linesman, didn't say anything, so he gave him a goal. That's the what people would call the cheating. That it was another goal, though. Uh, Signorini, his physical coach, told him you didn't need to score a goal with your hand because you had the ability to score two goals like the second one you scored. And the second one was fantastic. Starts with a foul on Glenn Hoddle, actually, but the ball gets taken eventually by Maradona. Starts running, needed a couple of decoys. Ruchaga was there and Jorge Baldano, who kept asking for the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball. Uh, Maradona will tell him in the showers, I, I, I meant to give you the ball all the time. And Jorge Baldano never really believed him. Anyway, kept dribbling. And then just before scoring, he remembered that his eight-year-old brother, in a friendly that he played against England, he actually did a similar move, but decided to score by kicking the ball to the far post and missed it. So, allowed dribble Peter Shilton, leaves Peter Shilton behind and scores the goal for what it was, of course, perhaps the best goal in the history of the World Cup. The genius and the other bit. And that's what made Maradona so huge. He wasn't just a football player. He wasn't just a bad person. It's much, much more complex than that. It requires a whole book this big to try to explain him. Maybe somebody should write one. Uh, nobody tells a better story than you, Guillaume. It is always fantastic to have you with us. We really appreciate you. Good to see you tonight. Thank you, Kate. All right, listen, um, we also want to just quickly update you on something that we also heard uh, via social media. In fact, it was CBS insider Fabrizio Romano who put this out there um, and said, confirmed Napoli Stadium, the San Paolo Stadium, will be renamed in honour of Diego Armando Maradona. Of, of course, he led that team, the Serie A team, to two titles and a UEFA Cup title. And this is how they will now honour him um, now that he has passed away. Let's show you some pictures of him winning the UEFA Cup for Napoli. Uh, Jamie, you listened to, to those stories that Guillaume tells, and, and we were watching footage, and I was seeing you kind of wide-eyed looking at the footage of him. That's the impact that he has, isn't it? Yes, I, I remember watching this game as a kid, and uh, funnily enough, this is a game Jürgen Klopp was actually at. This was against Stuttgart, and that was, it was his boyhood team, and when you heard Jürgen Klopp's words before the game. So we've all got those you know, vivid uh, memories and you know, obviously Jürgen Klopp was in, in the crowd that, that night, or certainly in the first leg, but uh, that's what he was famous for in that short period. What he did at Napoli, he left Barcelona, where, as Roberto said, he goes there for a huge fee. Obviously, he's, he's fantastic. He leaves under a little bit of a cloud, shall we say, but to go to Napoli, it's, you know, it, you've got to almost remember what Napoli were then, not even what they are now. They're going close to winning the title in the last few years, but to go to a team like that and take them to the title twice as well, I think that's where it comes from. And the adulation you see, 
it's not just for the football what Guillaume said, it's because he was flawed. So the man on the street in Buenos Aires in Argentina can say, he's like me. He, he, he goes through the same things as me. And I think sometimes supporters, you idolise football, but you want to feel in some way they're not that much different to me. There's, some, there's a connection there, there's, there's something there. And the fact he went through so many problems in his life, I think there was that extra bit of connection. And maybe there would be, you know, with a Messi or different players, there's just something about Maradona, no matter what trouble he may have found himself in in his later life or how he, his health was, he just had that adulation that would never go. And I just think that's unique to him, not just the greatest footballers, in the world we've ever seen. I just think there was something unique about the way he was as a man and as a person that really connected with the people of his, of his homeland. He had a special kind of magic, didn't he, Roberto? And I think we also have footage of him scoring your favourite goal that he ever scored in a Barcelona shirt. He was unique in, in doing things in football, through football, that was his weapon that maybe you cannot achieve in other worlds of life. Look at, that's the, remember Barcelona playing in the rivals in the Bernabeu and Real Madrid. He couldn't just score when he's beating the keeper. He needs to wait for the centre-half to collide against the post, the famous Juan José post in the Bernabeu. And that's the first time a Barcelona player had a standing ovation by the public of Bernabeu. All left-footed, look at that quality, he could use that left foot like anyone would use in, in his... Uh, and look at that connection, it's just... He was that magician that, I think, Every person in, in world football has a story where Maradona inspired them, even when he did something wrong. That was an example for people, look, don't do that. That's the part of football that you don't want to see. But it's, it's, a, it's a sad day because it's a human being passing. But I think his legacy is becoming even more powerful and it's going to affect generations to come. And here we are seeing these pictures again that we've seen a couple of times throughout the evening and I'm sure we will appreciate and enjoy many more times. Every time that we see a picture of somebody doing something special on the pitch, Michael always tells us that he did it in training. Um, <laughs> these are special though, aren't no, they, Michael? Uh, I, def I definitely didn't do this, um, <laughs> I'm being honest. He's, like, he's iconic, you know, speak, uh, hearing Jamie and Roberto talk about him. Um, and for someone who I didn't actually see play, but the effect that he's left on me, you've seen me tonight, I've been subdued. I can't, you know, I'm normally over the top, excited, happy, but I, I can't be, and that's, uh, it's an iconic figure when he can leave that effect on someone who's not even seen him play, but watch videos, read books, watch documentaries, and it's just a testament to the person he is, you know, not everyone's um, had the, the greatest experience in life and off the pitch he did have some demons, but he's, what, what, what a man he is. Um, and I just love the way he's always got a smile that, on his face. Yeah. I, can, I can do the bogling and the, the whining and all, that's, that, that's not a problem. It's never been a problem for me, but um, I could never have his technique and yeah, like I said before, no I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just ashamed. Uh, it's just a shame that I didn't get to see him play live. Yeah, listen, uh, it's, been, um, it's been a very different evening of Champions League and uh, it's been good to have your company. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Uh, it's been good to have your company too. It has been. It's been an emotional day and I'm sure that you guys will understand when I tell you it's, it, it's been a struggle to find the right words today to talk about the passing of a man who was one of the reasons that I and, and many others fell in love with this game of football. Diego Armando Maradona died today. And those four words are shocking to say. And they're actually even harder to absorb. More than a football legend, he was that rare kind of person that touched the lives of millions of people, oceans apart and across generations. He was the Michelangelo of the beautiful game. The football pitch was his canvas and the ball at his feet, a medium of artistic expression that was unlike any other. To watch Maradona play football was to sit on the edge of your seat, completely unable somehow to turn away from the screen, just totally transfixed. He was the irresistible presence known as El Pibe de Oro, the golden boy. Was the man flawed? Yes, but he was also mythical. The electrifying number 10 that redefined the game almost single-handedly. He won the 1986 World Cup and he scored the goal of the century that will echo through every century to come. Tonight, Argentina weeps and the entire football nation mourns. The man who inspired adulation beyond compare now weaves his magic 
in the green rectangle of heaven. And here, the memory of Diego Armando Maradona will live forever. Rest in peace.